Now, I am ready to name names. Nanay ako na binabalahura na ang mga anak. Utang na loob naman. Ayoko na to leave unanswered questions. Ilang beses kaming sinubukang patayin. I'm willing to go to war. Magandang araw sa lahat. Naglabas ng sama ng loob ang queen of all media na si Miss Chris Aquino sa kanyang mga bashers. Sapagkat ayon dito, masyado na daw umano silang napakan at makailang beses na din daw sila nitong pinatay. Sa kanyang video post ay tinukoy niya at pinangalanan umano ang mga taong patuloy na sinisira ang kanilang pangalan sa publiko. Matatandaan nitong nakaraang lang ng sunod-sunod ang mga pambabash na kanilang natanggap, particular na sa dalawa nitong anak na si Josh at Bimbi Aquino. At kaugnay po niyan, narito po ang buong video. Hi everyone! Normally, I would not be doing this holding the yellow pads where I wrote what I wanted to say, but... I was cautioned na I should stick to what I wrote. Hindi ko dadagdagan, hindi ko babawasan para na lang walang confusion, walang misinterpretation. Ako yung nag-insist that this had to be done now and this was the compromise. So, I hope you will bear with me and you will allow me now to start. Naghintay po ako Nag-isip ako because I now know by speaking or posting when I am angry or hurting, posibleng sirain ko pa ang sarili ko. Mas mahirap kasi ang damage control. From before my birthday until a few days ago, name it. Professional misunderstandings, they hurt me. A messed up seven year romantic entanglement again started making me question my worth. But ang pinakamahirap was to control myself. My family was always expected to take the high road. My siblings, kaya kaya nila yun. But as I have admitted to all of you, ako yung ibang Aquino. Plus, I'm a solo parent. Nanay ako na binabalahura na ang mga anak. Sinubukan ko to shut up para wag na tong humaba. But shutting up caused me even more stress. Stress happens to be the number one enemy of autoimmune. In just one week, o ay sa pagkamalisyos, ang pag-target sa panganay at sa bunso ko. Inisip siguro kung mag-imbento tungkol sa panganay at tawaging bakla yung bunso, titiklop na yung nanay. Now, I am ready to name names. Kuya Josh happens to be very happy in Tarlac. He is not there para mag-establish ako ng presence in the same province where my father and my brother started their public service journeys. Pero kahit walang pangalan, walang picture, walang detalye, naglabas ng video sa YouTube na merong nabuntis si Kuya Josh. Now, my bunso, si Bib. Bullying a 13-year-old dahil sa tingin ninyo or tingin nila na bakla siya. Utang na loob naman. This is 2021. We are living in 2021. Bimb is tall. He is good looking. He's well educated. He is intelligent. First honor siya, di ba? He is articulate, respectful. Hindi siya palamura. And he happens to be very mature. 
13 years old lang siya. Nakakahiyamang aminin. Pero siya ang gumagawa ng lahat ng paraan para lang gumaan yung mga problema ko at para mapaligaya niya ako. Since I said I will be naming names, we recently discussed Herbert. Para no questions, Herbert Bautista. Because the two of us tried to reconnect. But, as a mom I knew, I needed Bim's permission. To quote my son, nung pinag-uusapan namin, sinabi niya, I can see mama how you still look at him. You do not look at others the way you look at him. If he is your happiness, then he has my vote. Unfortunately, because elections are next year, dal ginamit ko yung vote, that word vote, it can be misinterpreted again. HB's plans, his political plans, whatever plans he has, they are his own. Para further na maklarify, binenta na po namin ang bahay namin in Green Meadows, in Quezon City this December 2020. We are just waiting to sign the lease contract. Lease, meaning magre-rent kami ng condo in a different city. Shifting to Tarlac to vote was the ideal because I didn't want to be impulsive with a major purchase. I wanted the time to decide kung bibili ba ng condo Magtatayo ba kami ng property in the south because we do have one in the south? Or will we create a small compound in Tarlac? For my health, we were actually ready. Nag-down payment na ng malaki to lease this villa in Boracay. But yung last blood panel ko, it was not good. Hindi ako pinayaga ng mga doktor ko to go far away. I needed to stay near them. Ayoko na to leave unanswered questions. There was a part of me that wanted to keep things private, but unfortunately, I don't have that luxury. You kept asking me what happened to Binkai. So this is the story. February 2020, bago mag-lockdown, nagtampo ako kay Bingkay. We needed a four-week break. When I messaged her, na, please, bumalik ka na. Pero nag-specify ako ng bagong ground rules. It was her choice to turn me down. And she did. She walked away. Ngayon, naiintindihan ko. Kahit very generous ako, gusto rin naman niyang mag-asawa, magka-family, and siguro matanggalan ng 24-7 na responsibility of taking care of me. But there's absolutely no bad blood. After my time thinking, Luminaw, I was being tested. Na pinpoint kasi, what was my vulnerability? It's simple. It's how much I love my sons. Alam kasi ng lahat, ako lang ang meron sila. I am exhausted from reading dun sa mga comments na ignore them or choose your battles. Please, I ask you, I know you mean well, but please do not decide for me because they are not your sons. Ako ang nanay nila. So I made my choice. 
for my sons in order for me to defend them, I know I'm willing to go to war. Because, oh, ito na yung hinihintay nyo na because. Because, hindi nila fault that they cannot count on their fathers. Hindi nila choice na ang nanay nila ang apelido Aquino. Hindi nila kasalanan that the lies about my family will continue until history gets completely rewritten. Nagbanggit lang ako ng yellow brick road in an art card. Default mode na yung line of attack. The STD lumabas na. Akala ko pa naman nag-iisip. May I explain? Bala yan na laban sa akin. Pwede niyong paputukin kung tinago ko. You can use it against me if it was a skeleton I hid in my closet. But that happened 18 years ago. Ako mismo ang nagtell all. I did that live on TV Patrol in my mother's house. That is an iconic interview. Alam kong iconic dahil nung panahon na yon, halos buong Pilipinas tumigil at nakinig at nanood sa akin. So how can you use something that I myself revealed about myself against me? Yun ang advantage kasi of having lived an open book life. Wala kang kinakatakutan na pwede pang maibulgar kasi lahat ng sinasabi nilang kahinaan mo o mga kasalanan mo, alam na ng lahat. The lesson here is, when you tell the truth, regardless of how painful it may be or how humiliating it can be, at least you are assured, hindi ka na matatakot sa bukas. You will never fear tomorrow because you faced up to it when it was happening. How many times do I have to repeat? Regardless that my life's work, my chance to come back on free TV, that was taken away from me. Because I was told, Mahirap nang ma-offend ang palasyo. I took that. Kasi political reality yan. Hindi yan ginawa ng nanay ko. Hindi yan ginawa ng kapatid ko. But I know how this game is played. Nangingibabaw pa rin sa akin that my father, he gave his life for this country. Sinabi niya at napanindigan niya, the Filipino is worth dying for. I was a year old when he was jailed. Panahon to ng martial law. I was 12 when he was assassinated. In the airport that is now carrying his name. And you know what? With everything that has happened, I still continue to pray for the current administration, for this government that is ruling us right now. Dahil kung pumalpak sila, tayong lahat, tayong mga Pilipino, tayo ang babagsak. Maling oras ito for political divisiveness. Millions of Filipinos are now jobless. Millions are hungry. 
Marami na. Millions have lost hope. Marami na ang namatay. Too many are sick. And too many can still die. The problem is, nung sinikap kong tumulong, na-misinterpret yon. Hindi po ako kagaya ng iba. Hindi po ako epal. Wala po akong agenda. Tumatanaw lang ako ng utang na loob. Because my mom taught me, there would be no Chris Aquino if Filipinos did not support or believe in you. Mas lalong hindi po ako kagaya ng iba. Kasi ako po, nagbibigay galing sa bulsa ko. Nagbabayad po ako ng tamang buwis. Wala po akong history na nagnakaw ako sa taong bayan. Nabasa ko po ito in a DDS blogger. She wrote about this. She said, alam ko raw yung first law of power. That's true. She even quoted me. Kung Duterte ang tatakbo, ibibigay ko na po sa kanila yon kasi wala kaming malalim na ugat, sugat, at hindi sila ang kaaway namin. This was referring to the 2013 elections. Minsan kasi kung hindi mo i-declare, hindi gets ng ilan. Pag minahalang mom ko, bali-balik pa rin man, Hindi pwedeng mabaling ties that bind. In the current Duterte cabinet, Secretary of Finance Sonny Dominguez and Secretary of Foreign Affairs Teddy Boy Luxin continue to have my unwavering respect. Tito Sonny keeps open communication lines with my sisters and me. Teddy Boy and I are text mates. Obvious ba? Pag may bumanat sa akin, Teddy Boy goes ballistic on Twitter. There are friendships too deep para matint ng politika. Tatapusin ko to by saying, who actually benefits by erasing the legacy of my parents? Sino ang nagtanggal ng freedom of speech sa Pilipinas? Sino ang nagpakulong at nagpapatay kay Ninoy Aquino? Let's go back. President Duterte started his political rise during my mom's administration. Legacy po ng nanay ko ang peaceful transition of power. This yellow. Nagbuwis buhay ang dad and mom ko for our country. And ito ang kulay nila. It is for that reason that I will not allow anybody to taint the symbol of their sacrifice. I have no party affiliation. Pero alam ko kung sino ang napatalsik at gustong gusto kaming gantihan dahil kulang para sa kanila na pinapatay na nila ang dad ko. That is not President Duterte because alam ko, never ko siyang binanatan. So para po sa mga DDS, wala tayong reason na maging magkaaway. I am who I am as a mother because apart from our three years in Boston, I only had one parent. She was my role model. Fourteen ako nung lumaban siya sa diktador. Hindi ko po maalala kung seven, eight, or nine times yung coup attempts. Pinatay po ang dad ko. Ilang beses kaming sinubukang patayin. Pero ito po ang diferensya. Never coming umalis. 
hindi naduwag ang nanay ko. I will never forget this. Sumabog yung kotse sa labas ng bedroom ko. Ang lakas na po ng barilan sa labas. Tumakbo po, papasok sa kwarto ko na walang bulletproof glass ang mom ko at si Noy. Kinaladkad nila ako from my bed pababa. Bago inisip ng nanay ko ang sarili niya, inuna niya to secure me. There are so many other instances. Even when she was already told she had just a few months to live, she fought. Sinabi niya, My children are not prepared. They lost their dad na hindi sila handa. I will not allow. Hindi ko hahayaan for them to go through that all over again. Kung meron man kaming tinago sa inyo, tinago namin all the procedures that she underwent para lang mabigyan niya kami. Nung nakita niya what we needed most, what her children needed, we needed time. We needed more time with her. Kaya ngayon, kaya ko bang ipahiya ang sarili ko dun sa pinakaunang nagmahal sa akin? Yung nag-alaga? Yung nagsakripisyo? Yung nagpatawad? At yung nagparamdam sa akin kung ano talaga ang unconditional love? You can say it so often, but action speaks so much louder than mere words. I will emphasize, I'm not here to attack. But you leave me no choice but to defend. Alam ko naman eh, hindi nyo ko tatantanan. Kaya habang may freedom of speech pa, magtiisan na lang tayo. You can and you will attack me. But, karapatan ko. Ipaglaban ang dignidad at pagkatao ng mga mahalaga sa akin. Clarify natin yan, ha? Who are the people who matter to me? Very obvious. My two sons. The memory of my parents. My siblings. And because I I cannot predict tomorrow. Baka dumating pa yung taong mamahalin ako ng tapat and publicly, mutually, aaminin namin sa inyo na may relasyon kami. Kasi nakita ko yun sa mom ko. When you truly love, hindi ka lang magtitiis. Para sa mahal mo, wala ka talagang ititira sa sarili mo. Ilalaban mo hanggang sa huling hininga mo. These two platforms, Facebook and Instagram, they are my only means to directly communicate with all of you. You know, totoo ako. Kilala nyo ako, I am real. I also know I do not have a troll farm. I know you are real. Lahat naman tayo gusto natin ng mapayapa na buhay. Lahat tayo, lalo na ngayon na pandemic, nag-iingat sa kalusugan natin. Pero, pinagod nyo na ako. Napagod na akong magpaapak. I won't be Chris if I do not end it this way. 
Congratulations, Taylor Swift, because I am a Swifty. She won Album of the Year. So this Swifty will quote from one of the songs from Folklore to end her statement. No one likes a mad woman. You made her like that. And you'll poke that bear till her claws come out. And you find something to wrap your noose around. And there's nothing like a mad woman. I'm taking my time. Taking my time. Because you took everything from me. Watching you climb. Watching you climb over people like me. Tama na. Sobra na. Lalaban na.